Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, to go any further on our materials here, I think I'm going to need to set it up so we can actually see what it looks like when we render it. To do that, I think I want a new screen layout here. So I'm going to come over here and click on plus and call this, uh, I'll just call this rendering. And for me, I want to split this up in a couple of ways. I want to take this little corner here and pull it down and give myself a new window here. Um, and I also want to give myself a new window over here. So I'm going to press the T key here to clean that up and the T key here to clean that up. Now in my render view up here, I can come over here and change it from materials to rendered viewport shading. So we don't have any lights in the scene, so we're not seeing a whole lot. We do have a little bit of ambient occlusion turned on. I turned this on earlier. We can turn that off. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create a polygon plane. So I'll press Shift A and go to Mesh and Polygon Plane. And I'm going to scale this up. And this is going to be our light. So I'm just going to take this and move it up and maybe to one side a little bit. Rotate it. To make that a light, we can just add a new cycles material to it, an emission material. So notice I've got the cycles renderer selected as opposed to the blender. So with that selected, I can click new, call this light, and change the surface from diffuse to emission. And now you can see we've got a little bit of light happening here. If I turn the strength up to something like 10, that'll give us a nice indirect light to work with. Now I'm going to come back over to the world settings and turn that ambient occlusion back on. Maybe bring it up to 0.2 to brighten it up just a bit. Now over here I'd like a node editor, so I'll change this to a node editor here. I'll hit the N key to close that. And so here is that emission material that we just created. If I click on the character, we can see the materials over here. So I'll begin, say, with this green, and now we have it over here. Now down here, I'd like both a perspective view and a UV editor. So I'm going to split the screen again like this. I can probably hit the T key to close these panels here. And then I'll change this to a UV image editor. There we go. So now if I tabbed into edit mode here and selected all those, you could see our UV map. All right. So I think this is going to give me the views I need to begin working on the materials. Now as I'm working here, you may begin to hear the fan on my computer, so my apologies. But it's kind of working hard to both render this in real time and record the video. Alright, so let's take a look at this material. This is kind of a vinyl, rubberish kind of material, I think. So to get a material like that, we really need to work with the specular highlight of the material. The highlight of a material, that uh, shiny part, is really how we tell whether an object is smooth or rough, if it's reflective or matte. And we can get a specular highlight in Blender using the glossy material. So here in the node editor, I'll press Shift A and go to Shader and add a glossy shader. And here it is. To combine these two shaders together, we're going to need a mix shader. So I'll add that here and then connect those two to there. And you can see we've got a lot of specular highlight. And that makes it look almost like ceramics, right? Because of the huge highlight on there. So what we can do is take the factor down some. If I drag this to the left, I get no gloss. And if I drag it all the way to the right, I get pure gloss. So I want it somewhere down in here, I think. Let's, let's begin with, say, 0.1 and see how that works. That's not too bad. That gives it kind of the vinyl rubber look that I think we want there. 
Now, of course, you can try different kinds of glossy methods here. You can change it from GGX to uh, Beckman, and that makes it a little bit different. Sharp makes it pretty clean. And this one here, I'm not sure exactly how that one's any different, but I kind of like it, though. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with that for now. Now you can also change the roughness of the specular highlight. So if I increase this to say 0.9, you can see that that's dispersed the specular highlight so much it isn't even there anymore. Let's take it down to 0.5. And that's dispersed the highlight quite a bit across the material. So this is just how spread out or how tight that specular highlight is and that's what gives us the clue as to what kind of material it is. So I'll just I'll take it back to point two. Now you can also change the roughness of the diffuse of the color. Let's take this up to point nine and see what happens. You can see that increases the roughness of the of the actual color underneath the specular highlight. So we could maybe take that to point one. That's not too bad. All right, well, let's do that again with this uh, purple part. This, I think, is a little bit less shiny than the green. So for the green, we had a factor of 0.1. We might be able to take the purple down even less than that. So let me add a glossy and a mix. And let's take this down to say 0 0.05, something like that. And we could even take the roughness up just a bit, say to 0 0.4. And so you've got a little bit of shine there, but not as prominent as the green. And that's how you get that different feel of each material, is just a slightly different look to the specular highlight. All right, let's look at the belt. The belt here is going to be a metal, I think. So it's going to be pretty shiny. Let's add another glossy. Let's mix it. And that doesn't look too bad just right there as it is. But I think I'd like to take the color down a bit. Now it's a little bit too hot. So we can do that two ways. We can, one, take the color down here in the actual diffuse shader, and I'll just bring that down just a hair like that. Or we could also bring it down here in the specular highlights, like that. In addition, we could sample the color out of the diffuse shader and put it into the glossy. So if I came in here, grabbed that eyedropper, and then clicked over here, I would create a specular highlight with the same color. So now maybe I can move this back up and let the highlights be kind of dark, like that. So it's just how you want to do that. Oftentimes metal will have the same or a similar color highlight as the diffuse color. All right, so what else do we want to do here? We've got green, we've got the purple. Uh, let's take a look at these things here. These appear to me like they'd be some sort of a metal, maybe except for this piece in here. But these pieces out here I think would be a metal. So let's go to the boot brown here, and let's do a similar thing with this. So I'll press Shift A, grab a glossy, Shift A, grab a mix, plop that in there, and let's see what we can get here. A little too much, huh? All right, let's bring it down to 0.3 and see what happens. Not bad, a little bit too much. How about 0.2? And then we take the roughness here in the glossy down to zero. Now that's a little too much. That becomes a mirror. So maybe let's take it to 0 0.05. Let's try that. Still a little too much. How about 0.1? Once again, we could sample that color out of the diffuse shader. So I'll hit the eyedropper, sample that color, and then I'll take it up just a little bit so it's a little bit brighter like that. 
So we still have the highlight, but we're catching the color in the highlight. Now for this blue piece on the boot, I've gone ahead and added a diffuse and a glossy here. It's a little bit too matte. The diffuse or the um, specular shader is a little bit too spread out. So I think what I'm going to do is take the, the roughness down quite a bit to maybe 0 0.05. And that'll kind of sharpen that up a little bit. I think I also want to take the color a little bit darker like this maybe. Yeah, so something like that. Maybe let's take this down to 0.4. So something like that. Something that's a little bit shinier there. I think that'll work for now. All right, well, we're getting there. Let me press Control up arrow and really challenge my computer here to <laughs> render this out. We've still got more materials to do. And I'll go ahead and finish up the materials for the boots, the soles, the little antenna. And in the next video, we'll talk both about subsurface scattering for the skin, and we'll maybe look at putting the logo on the tunic here. So thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley-Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.